and I'm in the uh, Teaching and Learning Center, uh, as well as April January Cox. April is a um, an adjunct professor in theater here at uh, PAC. Uh, April, you want to say anything? She leads the IOCD, the Introduction to Online Course Design class. That's me. <laughs> okay. We're going we're gonna to co-present this thing together today. Anyway, so I am, um, get, we're going to take you on a little tour of uh, an online and a hybrid course template. These are available to anybody at Palo Alto or anybody in the system for that matter. So we're going to talk about, you know, the definition of a Canvas template. We're going to talk about two types of templates that we have available to you, an online and a hybrid template. Uh, I'll explain what those mean. And I'm, I'm going to tell you how you can obtain these templates. Just while we're at it, does anybody have, does, is there any special reason anyone is here? I mean, what, do, what are you expecting out of this workshop? What do you understand when you hear the word template or what we're doing with this workshop? Raleigh, as you know, I I built the calculus to online course for PEC. Uh -huh. So, you know, I'm the only one who taught it, but it hasn't been taught after that. But I would like to continue to tweak it, do things okay. on my end on that canvas thing that I built. So uh -huh. I just don't want to abandon it, abandon it because I still have everything there. Okay. I, I need to show you what I have done, and it worked very well. Great. At least my version of it when I ran the course. It, 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 uh, some of the t tools that I put to help the students was really great, and it helped them with their exams and their homeworks and grades and stuff like that. But I'd great. like to improve it some more, Raleigh. Okay, Mohammed, we can talk. Anybody else have any comments about why um, they... My, hi, uh, Vanji. Hi. Long time no see. I know. <laughs> so we, we just got started, and we're talking about uh, what we're doing here. We're talking about the Canvas template, and we're going to look at two types of templates, one that's completely online and one that could be used with hybrid classes. And then I'm going to show you all how to obtain these templates. So I'm just going to move along. And if you want to stop me anytime during this presentation, that's the way I like to run things. I'm just going to, I'm going to roll. And if you need to stop me, stop me and ask a question. Hey, Raleigh, the craziest thing is that I never used the Canvas templates to build a course. No. I, mean, I, had a, I had a basic idea of where I was going. So I used another instructor's templates. Then, uh -huh. then I basically copied those because time was running short. So... I'll be interested to see how I can use these templates for further tweaking. Well, Muhammad, that's typically the way people do things. They get okay. thrown, thrown a course at the last minute, and they adopt somebody else's course, and, and that works. Uh, I, I didn't really adopt somebody else's course, but, you know, the, the, for, for the things like the front page and, you know, some other tweaks right. that I had to do, I used some of those parts, but everything else was my, my crazy stuff. Right. Which worked. Right. Well, well, maybe maybe there's some stuff in here that you can use. Yes, yes. All right. So for everybody knows, everybody who's ever used Cam Canvas knows that when you get Canvas, it's a blank can it's a blank canvas. You know, it's a blank shell. And they're empty. There's nothing in it. And so what the template is, it's a Canvas course that has pre-designed structure in it. It has a homepage. It has this area called Start Here Course Orientation. And it has learning modules built into it. And this stuff is, uh, you know, pretty standardized, but you're, you're, you can change it. You can uh, change this stuff up. It's just a starting point for um, people who want to build a course. These, these templates are especially good for people who come in to pack or hired at the last minute and they're asked to build a course. This gives them a foot up, a step up on, on course design. So the online template is a template that is used for completely online classes. That's, that's the purpose of the template. There is a hybrid template 
And the hybrid template is a, is one that is is built to accommodate a combination or a, a, um, a, a hybrid sort of version of online and face-to-face. -face. It's a blend of the two. And it's built to accommodate that sort of thinking about online design. Uh, for the for the definition of a hybrid course, this is coming down from the state, a distance education course in which the majority of the planned instruction occurs when the students and instructors are not in the same place. So more than 50% of the instruction, but less than 85% is online. All right, so in the online uh, course, the course has this sort of homepage. It has a place where you can type in the course name and number, your name. It gives a little bit of instructions to the students here. And then you can type in some more information about yourself and it has help desk information. So this is what the homepage of the online course would look like. When they click into the modules area of the online course, it has an area called Start Here Course Orientation. And that's broken down into instructor documents or instructor information and student resources. This information up here in red is stuff that you need to change in the template. For example, what should I do first? You know, so you tell your students how to get started and what they should do first. This page, when they click on this page, it sort of prompts you to do these things. There's a welcome page that you can create for yourself. There's a course schedule that you can fill out. And there's contact information for the instructor. Down here in blue, this information does not have to be changed. This is, this is template. This, is, this stays the way it is, unless you want to change something. When we get into the modules, we've provided you with a module um, uh, one and two. These are examples of how you might build a module. It doesn't mean that you have to build a module the way that we've done this, but we've added an overview page, a content page, which you can think of as lecture. There's a quiz example. There's a discussion example. There's an, ex there's a, an assignment example. And then there's what we call a wrap-up. And we're going to explain what all of this means. But this is just an example of how you could build a module. Down here, we have more modules for you that you can fill out. This is not an example. These are just pages that you can you know, plug and chug with your information. Um, so why would you want to use a template? Well, it's what I just said. A template is something that you can take and plug and play. It's plug and chug. You can plug in your content. It's not about designing your content per se. It's about having places to put your content. The way you present your content is up to you. The, the template is just there. It's a content holder. You can modify the page. You can modify the pages in the template. It's easy to use. It saves time. It also meets what we call PACS online course design guidelines. There are some guidelines at PAC that uh, we should be following with online courses. It also meets what we call web accessibility standards, which is a legal aspect. Uh, people who have disabilities, they're uh, low vision or blind, or maybe they're deaf, uh, these courses are built in such a way that at least the template part of it can be read by these people who have to use uh, screen reader software. Uh, it makes a course easier to review for those of you who are chairs of a department. For example, if you wanted to have your faculty build courses to certain standards and you wanted to make sure that they were doing that, if they're using one of these templates, it's easy to look at the template and say, it's, it's meeting standards. I see that they've done at least this level of information. It also promotes consistency. If we think about these courses from the uh, perspective of the student, as students move from one course to another through a program, 
if those courses are semi-consistent in structure, then students don't have to figure out how you've constructed your course, how you've built your course. So it's just a question of, from a student's perspective of being consistent for them, especially courses within a program. And uh, April, I realize I've, I've, I've jumped into your area, so I'm gonna let you have it now. If you will take it over from here and show them what an online course looks like. Okay. Um, let me give you, uh, do you have access to, change, to grab the screen? Let's find out. Um. I have access, but it's not showing me uh, what I'm supposed to be showing you. Let me pull it up first and then. Uh, so hi, everyone. So some of you joined late. My name's April, and I, no, you, you disabled it. I can't share. Oh, sorry. Okay, there you go. Sorry. Let me try again. There we go. Um, all right, so everyone can see the template that we're in now. So I teach the IOCD course, uh, I don't teach, I facilitate the IOCD course, and uh, that's the uh, introduction to online course design. And the thing I love about the template that Raleigh has developed is, uh, I use templates all the time, and you probably do too. So you go into, you need a calendar, or you need a PowerPoint presentation, you go into Word or whatever, and you choose an existing template, and then you just plug your stuff into it. So your titles are already the right size and bold face, and there's placeholders for your pictures and a place for your text. And so that's kind of what this is, is it, it just helping you organize your course in a way that's helpful for your learners to be able to find everything that they need. Because you don't want them to spend all their time trying to figure out how to navigate your course. You want them to spend their time in the content of your course. And so that's what the template does, is it helps make it easier for them to navigate and follow and find the resources they need so that when they're in your class, so to speak, when they log in to work on your course, they can spend that time in your content instead of trying to figure out how to take this course. And so that's why that, where that consistency um, is so helpful for our learners. So uh, this is what it looks like. This is a demo version. And so you can see it has all these highlighted parts. And like he was saying, this is where you just easily plug in your information and then get rid of the highlight. So that it's in a glance, I can see what I need to fill in and what I don't. And so like here it says, insert a picture, but that's optional. You don't have to. So like Wally said, we're not telling you this is how you have to teach your course. This is just a way to help organize it. And then um, down here, this is a section that it already gives the instructions to your learners. This is how you get started. You, can, you need to go to the syllabus, click on modules on the left-hand side, because unfortunately part of teaching online is teaching them how to learn online mm -hmm. because they don't know how to do that. And so in the template, those instructions are in there for you. So you don't have to type all those kinds of things in. So that saves you a lot of time. Again, you can co concentrate on getting your content in there. So this tells them, click on modules in the left-hand menu and go to the start here course orientation. So if they come over here and they click on modules, hmm, then you go down and here's the start here orientation. Now in the template are also some other things for you. These are some resources up here that Raleigh has built in to help you as you develop. So there's a, a development checklist to help you keep up with um, what steps am I doing to develop my course? Um, and what are some other things um, I might need to include that I haven't thought of? So again, it's just to help you design your course without having to do a lot of research and invent the wheel. These are the examples he talked about. So if you come down to um, the orientation module, I think is really important for online students because this is, this is their one reference they can go back to any time in the course that they need help. So you're going to tell them, this is literally a checklist of, this is how you get started. First, you're gonna read my welcome page, and then you're gonna read the syllabus, and then you're gonna read the course schedule, and so on and so forth. You notice there's nothing highlighted. There's nothing I have to type in here until I get down here. This is where you enter a brief description of your course, and he gives you examples of things you could say. List any prerequisite skills that they're gonna need. Are your students going to need to know how to create a PowerPoint? Are they going to need to know how to video themselves and, and 
turn that into you somehow? What are the skills that they are going to need to have? And any technology that they are going to need as well. Um, at the very least, they need a device that gets online and some kind of access to the internet, right? So those are things they're going to have to have. And then you can just go page by page and just fill in the blanks. Here's where you can tell them something about yourself so that they see there's a person behind the course, right? Not just, oh, I know Mr. Smith is teaching this class. Tell them something about you. Like if this is a biology class, why did you get interested in biology? What's a cool place you've been and witnessed biology in real life? Or how long have you taught biology? Let them get to know you. It's the same thing you would do face to face. You can make a short little video for them. You could even make it outside or in your classroom or whatever. Um, but look, I'm being redundant. Um, it has a course schedule in here and the chart is already, already made out for you. And this is a way for your learners to look and see what is the progression of the course going to be? What am I going to learn in the different units? So you can put your objectives here. You can list these are the activities you're going to do in each unit. These are assessments you're going to have. And you've got due dates over here so that they can look ahead and know what's expected of them. And there's no you know, big curveball surprises halfway through uh, the semester. So they can kind of follow along. It's kind of like an agenda for them to follow and, and see that there is purpose behind everything that they're doing in your course. This is your contact information, so, so important. I, I took a training not that long ago where I literally nowhere in Canvas could find contact information um, for my instructor. <laughs> and that was very frustrating. So uh, let them know how to contact you. And then we've already put in the meet and greet discussion for you so that they can get to know each other, right? We're we talk a lot about student engagement. There's workshops this week on it, right? How do we get our students involved? How do we do group work online? How do we spark that interest in them? And this is one of the ways to do it. Let them meet each other. Let them learn something about each other. And you, of course, are learning something in the process. Again, most of us do this the first day of class, right? We go around the room. At the very least, they tell us their name and something about them, like, what their major is or what they want to get out of this course or what their experience in this topic is. So this is a chance for them to get to do that and get to know each other. And it's already embedded. And so then the second part of this is kind of all the legal stuff that Raleigh was talking about. We have to make sure students understand that these resources are available for them. So rather than tell them there's resources for you, go to the website. We're, we've included resources here for them so that they can, you know, if they, they want to know what are some accommodations that the districts can help them with, they click on this. Each college has its own link here. There's people that they can contact, right, for the different things that they might need. You don't have to do anything to any of these pages. They're just here. This is a link for the library. Some of you are going to do research projects and you want them to know what their library resources are. So here's some links to um, the, the databases that we have available to them in our library. All resources that, you know, it used to be you would take a tour to the library maybe, but we can't do that in online education because we're not meeting these people face to face. Um, and then different support things that we have for the students are all in here. Another thing that's helpful is having these links here, you can remind them. So like right here, sorry, right here is the netiquette page about what's acceptable behavior online, which again, yes, we have to teach them that because what's acceptable in social media is not acceptable in an online classroom. This talks about just some general rules of what you should and shouldn't do. So for my first, actually for every discussion in my course, but at least the first couple, I have a link at the bottom of the discussion page that says, Remember our rules of netiquette and be professional in your responses. And I give them a link back to this page. So if they've forgotten, I can just link them back to this page that's already created for them, even with a little video. So if they don't want to read, they can just watch the video. And then you get down to the modules. And um, like you said, the modules are kind of plug and play. We've only given you three pages to begin, an overview page, a content page, and a wrap-up page because we don't know what kind of assignments you'll have. We don't know what kind of discussions you want to include. You can always add more pages to a module, that's easy. But this just gives you the very basics. So each 
Each module has an overview page where you tell them, these are our objectives for this unit. So you can think of a module like, maybe you do units in your course, or maybe you do chapters, or maybe you do, uh, maybe you call them chunks. I know I was in a class one time, they call them chunks. Um, so each module covers a different aspect of your course. So you probably are already doing this, right? Logically, you've got some order of things that you do. So by putting them in, in smaller manageable modules, the students can kind of see how one leads to two, leads to three, leads to four, et cetera, in your course. So start by telling them, these are the objectives just for this unit. This is just what we're trying to grasp in this unit. And then here's a to-do list of how to be successful in this module just like the one you saw for the overview page. And so this is where you fill in what they're going to do. So maybe in one module, you've got two content pages and they've got a paper they have to write and they've got a discussion they have to do and they've got a video they have to participate in. And, but in some modules, they may not have that much. Maybe this one module is just going to be the research project. And so they've got to follow the steps for the research project. So you fill in whatever the steps are they need to complete the module. And then, like he said, we just gave you one content module. And think of this as this is where you put the information that they're learning from. So maybe you have a video of your lecture here, or maybe you've got a link to another thing. So like if you teach history, maybe there's a documentary that they need to watch and they're going to respond to. So this is where you could have a link to that documentary. Um, you could have links to textbooks. Some of you have online textbooks that they use. So you could place the link here and that will take them straight to the chapter that they need rather than just go to your textbook and find it. So this is just a kind of what would you do? Where, what's the lecture? What's the content that they're learning for this unit? And you can have more than one content page. I do in my course that I teach. Um, or you could just have this one that links them to an exterior like textbook, for example, that they might be using. And then any additional resources you could put here that might help them with whatever this unit is. So like uh, maybe a, a link to a periodic table for whatever this content unit is. Um, and then they have a link to that to access, to refer to, or a formula chart for a math class. And then we have a wrap up page. And the wrap up page to me is just kind of a final check in on this unit. This is what you should have learned. This is this is what we did. These are the activities we did. And so now you should be able to um, identify the different parts of the anatomy or whatever you learned in that unit. And then the what's next. This is kind of where you entice them for the next unit. All right. So we learned parts of the anatomy. Next, we're going to look at whatever the next unit is and how the anatomy, knowing the anatomy will help you in that next thing. So you're kind of helping them make those connections between the units, that all these units work together to teach this course that we're taking together. So um, we, we put a lot of modules in here. You can add more modules. You can take away modules. I believe, are there 10 in here, Raleigh? Eight in here. In this one, there are eight, yes. And so that doesn't mean you have to have eight modules. Maybe you need four modules. Maybe you need 20 modules. We just wanted to give you enough to start with that, you know, you can plug and play and go from there. And then. Um, so, April, um, yeah. I have a question. You have eight modules there. Um, I'm working with a couple of adjuncts. And and so um, to make it easy for them, if they have, um, say, for instance, uh, 20 weeks, mm -hmm. um, What's the easiest way, um, because each module is going to be equal to a week, what is the easiest way to add modules? One at a time? I mean, what, are, what, what, what would be the easiest way? Personally, I would, I would copy and paste before I put content in. Um, we also have a question from Brian asking uh, kind of a similar opposite question. So I'll address yours first. So um, you can easily copy and paste a module. So let me come down here to nine. If I click on this, I can duplicate this module. Do you not want me to do this, Riley? Go ahead. I can delete it. Yeah. Um, I can duplicate this module, and it will duplicate everything that's in ah, that. Okay. Okay. And then if yeah. I know you know, want a discussion for every single module, I could have added a discussion page here and then copied it and it would have four pages automatically. Okay, that's easy enough. Um, okay. And so just the opposite, if you don't need eight, you just click and you can delete any of okay. the modules. 
that you don't need. Thank you. Is that helpful? Um, yes. Brian's question was, can I add parts of these templates to a course that I've already made without adding the whole template? Yes, yes, you can, because I do it all the time. Um, and vice versa, yes, you can take parts. So like if you want the start here module, I'm just, I'm guessing, Brian, maybe that's the one you want. Um, yes, you can copy that over. Um, if we have time at the end, I'll be glad to show you because I want Raleigh to make sure he can access his template. Uh, the course schedule, yes, you can pick a page, you can pick a module to copy into another course and vice versa. So um, earlier, um, someone was talking about how they took, they looked at someone else's course, but then they used part of it kind of as their own template. You can do the opposite too. You can take this template and you can go and find pages. So like if you already have an electronic version of your syllabus, dump it into the template. You don't have to retype everything. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So if you already have a Canvas course where you've got all your discussions already created, you can just take those discussions and plug them into this template. You don't have to retype. You can just copy the whole page. And so, um, yes, you can go either direction. And if we have time at the end, I'll show you. Um, and if, if not, Mallory is your person. <laughs> all right, anything, anything else from this one, Raleigh, you need me to? No, any other questions on this? Before I jump into the other, those were good questions. Yes, they were. You, you can pluck out of the template whatever you want, or you can pluck out of another course into the template. Any piece of anything, you can move it around. Any other questions or comments before I move forward? I have a question. OK. The, the formal e-syllabus that we get from the district, has a lot of the materials now we have in some of these modules. Mm -hmm. So how do we prevent students from having to read both so that they don't end up in wasting time? That would be your call. Uh, so do have any coordination with the district so that uh, if it is going to be built into Canvas template, then they would remove those from the e standard e-syllabus template. That would be, I, I wouldn't recommend that. I would say that it's your call as to whether you have duplication of that material or whether you keep it in the template or delete it from the template. You see what I'm saying? Um, the, the, because everybody is not going to, everybody who teaches a particular course is not going to be using the template. So I would say we don't remove stuff from the, from, from the syllabus rather. So my uh, so so the question is if it's already listed on the course syllabus, which is what's on Concourse, right? Right. Um, you can just reference that in their syllabus and the template. You could just give them a link to the course syllabus. In fact, most the Canvas courses come with a link already to the course syllabus. Right. So you could just in your syllabus say um, to to see you know, whatever, whatever's in that course. So, so like if, if student expectations are listed in your concourse syllabus, which mine are not, but if yours are, you can simply in your syllabus say, um, make sure you refer to course expectations in the, in the concourse, in the course syllabus on concourse. And you can just put a little hyperlink right there. And that will send them to that syllabus. I do a scavenger hunt in my first overview chapter um, where they have to take a quiz where they answer questions about, um, how much are the are the essays worth? How many discussions will we have in this course? Uh, what are my office hours? And it makes them go through the syllabus and find those things. Um, so I actually have everything in my syllabus, but I could easily in there say, according to the, the concourse syllabus, what are student expectations for attendance? And then they would they would know to go to that. Did that help answer your question? Yeah, actually, I was referring to the text that you had in the module that was in blue because that's standard and faculty members will not have to populate that section because it is already there, whereas they can focus on the red part. So that those blue uh, headers 
it came across as if most of the material would be similar to what is in the e syllabus and that is the part in e syllabus we are not supposed to be changing um, because that is pretty standard for all colleges right and, and uh, i have found it useful in the past to find a way for students to read those when you have one long document it's very hard for students to focus and read that long document. The way you have structured the template is really helpful because it allows us to tell, you can even give some points to them that if you complete this module, meaning you are reading what we want them to read, mm -hmm. then you say you are going to get 100 points uh, at the end. And only after you complete this, then you can move on to your actual course module, the first module or so. So there is a lot of benefit in what you have done here. But I also sometimes uh, feel uh, which happened because I was taking this uh, digital badging course and uh, e-portfolio course. I found that sometimes I keep clicking. It takes me deep into the, uh, the course so much extra material. I say, what happened? I was told I need to spend only two hours this week. How come I have already spent five hours and I haven't even completed 20%? Right. I know the feeling. I, I've been there. Any other comments or questions? Um, Raleigh and April, I have another question. On the... Um... And, and the templates I've told you before, they're just, they're wonderful. They make it easy. Um, and it's really good information instead of trying to have it on my, on my homepage and for the student resources. But um, I want to ask a question um, about the student resources. Um, I have, I used all of that just recently in my summer class and I used it in my spring classes, do I, um, is this all updated information on the student resources or do I need to check or is it out of date? Um, it, it, it is as up to date as it can be right this second. I would say keep an eye on it though, uh, okay. because I mean, you might catch something that we don't catch. Okay. No, and I just, I just mean by, so um, if I am copying one of my courses, the same course, like from the, say from the spring, yeah. um, rather than the summer from the spring, because it's exactly the same. And so I was just wondering if all the list of the student resources um, that will transfer over, are they updated or do should I take a look at the template that's on commons or should I use, look at and try to compare it with summer or not even I, worry about it? Elsa, I would say take a look at it once in a while because once we put it up there, it's static. Okay. You know, it, okay. it, it doesn't automatically update. I mean, we, that could be done, but we, we don't have, we're not doing it right now. No, I know, I know. I, I, I was just asking. I didn't know yeah. um, it, you but know, how a, updated it was or I, I should try to compare if links or different phone numbers are different, especially with all the COVID and all of that. Or Right. Um, well, it, it's pretty recent. Uh, okay. The, the version 4 that's out there of the template right now was put up there within the last year. Oh, As okay. a matter of fact, after yeah. all this COVID stuff started. Gonna say okay. spring. You updated that in the spring, right? Yeah. In the spring. Yeah. Yeah. So if I used it in the spring, it should be good. It should be good. Yes. Okay. Thanks. But that's a good point. You you know, just because we put it up there doesn't mean it's going to be it's going to stay good forever. It, it's going to change, and and somebody like you probably needs to reach out to us and say, hey, you got some misinformation in here. Something's changed. You need to change it in the template or whatever. And people do. People will reach out to me and say, a "Link's not working anymore." I mean, because I mean, that's just the, the truth of, of technology and the internet. You know, sure. Tomorrow, it's three weeks out, outdated. Right. So, right. you know, we try, but like he said, it's you know, just let us know if you find something. 
We, we're not going to catch it constantly because things are ever evolving, especially in the world of COVID. Oh, come on. I don't believe that at all. Raleigh and you are always have it down. <laughs> Raleigh more than me. Thanks. <laughs> Raleigh is 606. You need to get to your hybrid. All right. You ready for this? Let's go. Let I love, as someone who has taught hybrid, I love this hybrid template. Let me find myself here. Where am I? Here I am. It is so helpful. So, so you just, we just looked at what is considered a completely online template that was version four of the template. It's been through multiple iterations. Now we're going to look at this thing that is a hybrid version of that template. It's a little different. Can everybody see that? Yep. Okie dokie. So right off the bat, you can see that it looks a little different. Um, it's got a different banner. It's got a different, it's got some links here underneath the banner. This banner is for Palo Alto. It, this, this template is used by other schools as well. It's pretty generic. Uh, it's got the same sort of information. It's got the instructor, the contact, the office hours, and it's everything in yellow needs to be replaced. And it tells the students how to get started. It says, first, carefully read through the syllabus by clicking the syllabus link. Next, click the start here to begin the orientation. So, so here is a start here. That The link is right there. Yeah. Yep. Oh, yeah. So we click that, and it takes us over here. But another way to approach that would be the modules right here. I clicked start here, right here, but here's another way to enter that. And so once the students get in here, they go straight to this orientation module. And I'm not going to belabor this. I'm not going to make you suffer through all of this a second time. But we have a start here. We have a welcome. We have a course learning outcomes, textbook material, course policies. So what we're trying to do here, think of, think of your new faculty. You know, how do you teach faculty to build an online course? Well, a lot of times people just show them a syllabus and say, go do it. Go build something in Canvas and teach it. But this provides them um, areas where they can plug in information. It prompts them to do these things. Down here are the student resources. This is Canvas information. This is how to use Canvas. This is how to use Zoom. Communicating on lap, line, that's kind of like uh, the uh, netiquette. Student code of conduct. So this stuff all reaches out to the different aspects of, of the things that you shouldn't be including in an online course. Uh, I'm not going to go through these. I'm just going to give you an, an overview. Then we have module one and module two. And you'll notice that these are a little bit different. They're divided up between online activities. I mean, there's an overview of online activities and then there's online material and then there's a part of the module that's in-class activities. And this is what makes this course a hybrid. In other words, I'm not telling the students to do everything completely online. I've, I've delineated between what are my online activities and what are my in-class activities. And we'll look closer at this in just a minute. We actually have an example up here for you from an anthropology class. This is an example module. There is an overview. There are online materials, online activity, online uh, discussion, and there's in-class activities. So let's see what this looks like in a real example. If we go into the overview. You can see that this particular professor, this is uh, Dr. Erin Berger's course. She's an anthropologist. She actually works with us at Alamo Colleges Online. And she has given them a short introduction to this section of the, of the course. It's a module. And she 
tells them this is what we're doing online and this is what we're doing in class. Just a brief overview. And then she jumps into the learning objectives. All right, so we're going to define the four forces of evolution and blah, blah, blah. blah. And then we're going to recall key figures and we're going to discuss and we're going to use data in a, in a certain way. And then she has their task. Online activities, view the online materials, foundation of evolutionary biology. Read chapter two, read chapter four. So this is an example of task. And then she gets into the in-class activities. We will use our in-class time to work in groups to complete the following activities. So complete the handout, watch the video, and we're going to have a discussion. That's what we're going to do in class. All right, so let's go to the next page. She has used the content page here as an area to show them some videos, some documentaries. So she has two videos here that she wants them to see. And she gives extra sources down here at the bottom, or the sources. So this is how she's using her, her um, lecture, so to speak. We go to the next page. She's got um, a basic worksheet here. It's an online activity. And she wants, th this is a, a, a quiz. It has six, it's worth six points. Uh, it is... There is no time limit. They only get one attempt and so on. So it's a quiz built into the module. Here's a discussion activity. She actually gives them directions. She's very explicit. She gives them an introduction, like, what is this about? She gives them directions. What does she want them to discuss? She gives them the grading criteria. And she tells them how to submit this this activity, this discussion. The checklist. So these are in-class activities. So she's telling them, you know, be sure you've read chapters two and four. View the lecture videos that you just saw on that content page. Complete the, the worksheet. She gives them a worksheet that she wants them to bring to class and participate in the discovering, um, evolution discussion board. Here's the worksheet. They can download this. So we go on. And then after all is said and done, this is the wrap up. What have you learned? What you did? And what's next? And usually somewhere on this page you connect like why we've done what we've just done and why that's important to what we're doing next. So that's the importance of a wrap up. So let's go back into the modules. This was your example that I just showed you. This can be deleted once you adopt the template or once you bring the template into one of your courses. This is the orientation module. And then this is an actual module. So let's see what it looks like uh, without all that content in it. So it looks like this. So it has an area here so you can provide a brief introduction about the module. It has an area where you can list all your objectives. And then it has an area where you can do your online activities versus your in-class activities. And we go to next. And this is your online materials. This is where the, the video was for that example I showed you. This could be anything, anything that you want it to be. Video, text. It could be reading instructions. These are the in-class activities. It's just another type of overview page for what they're going to do in class. This is your checklist. We're going to do this, this, and this. And then here's your wrap-up. Here's what we learned. Here's what you did. You physically did. And here's what we're doing next. This is how it all relates to the next topic. So this template that I'm showing you is available to anybody. 
you can use it as is or you can modify it to whatever you want you want it to be it comes with this information here at the top faculty resources you don't want students to see this so of course you would keep this not checked off if i make that a check mark a green check mark it makes everything visible to the students but we don't want the students to see that so we wouldn't check these off so this would be invisible to the students and so what this does for you as a faculty is it tells you how to use this template like how to use this layout which is also another word for the template uh, there's a checklist for um, we put this in here when we had to do the return to campus checklist or the hybrid for the hybrid blended course type um, uh, situations and then you have how to learn canvas and there's accessibility techniques and how to embed content on a page like videos file links powerpoints youtubes whatever so let me just review what we got we have a home page everything in yellow you need to replace it tells the students how to get started. They can click Start Here, and it takes them into the Start Here area. It tells them this is a hybrid course. Read the syllabus. There's a, you could create a course tour. You could tell them the technical skills they need, required equipment, and then next steps. Of course, all of this can be modified by you. So that Start Here was right here that's the page we were just looking at there's your welcome there's your learning outcomes your course learning outcomes your textbook material and so on so you can see that this is just plug and chug for people who are building a course this saves you having to actually construct all these pages yourself and once again this course comes with multiple learning modules this one comes with i think 16 correct 16 modules if you don't need these of course you can delete them all right let me go back to my um, presentation any questions about this course before i move on move back to the powerpoint any questions or comments gina had a question in the chat she said um where do we see the hybrid templates i'm going to show you that <laughs> I'm going to show you how you can obtain a copy of it. Is that what you're asking, Gina? Um, Gina also said that it's yes, just, yeah. is the students often go to assignments instead of modules to access the materials. Um, I, I deny them access to see those menus, Gina. You can go to settings, and you can choose what they see in the navigation um, menu. Okay. I take away quizzes, I take away um, assignments, I take all that away. Mine have mo home, modules, and grades. Oh, so, that's great. Thank you very much. That's all. You can hide see. these. Okay. This so we can what, just pull down, right? Yeah. Oh, okay. Go to settings. That yeah, helps. Pull it down. That is the only issue I have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Thank then you, you have to save it. Make much. sure you save it. So Raleigh, tell them how to find it. Oh, for to find that menu thing? No, to find how on oh, oh yeah. It's like let slide me, 10. Let me go back to my other screen. So you all should have a copy of this uh, PowerPoint handout. Did you drop that just, in chat? Yeah, I just dropped it in the chat so that everybody has it. So there is a, a copy of this PowerPoint in the chat that everybody can download and save and once you go into the chat you can act i'm sorry and once you go in open up that powerpoint you can actually click on these links here when it says let's have a look at these templates you can actually click on these and you yourself can visit these things by yourself because these are demo versions anybody can click into these without having to be put into the course so the question is how do i get a copy of these templates Okay, so if you're familiar with Canvas Commons, or if you're not, I'm about to tell you how, there are two courses that we're talking about here. One is this one right here, Pack Canvas Template Version 4, and Palo Alto College Hybrid Course Layout. You can obtain those from this thing called 
Canvas Commons. And I'm going to show you the instructions for how to do that. This slide shows you or walks you through doing what I'm talking about. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to show you how to do this um, with one of the courses. I'm not going to read this for you, but let me, um, let me go back over here and copy. Let's say that we want this. I'm going to copy this text and I'm going to go into a course that I have. I think it's down here. And I need to clean this course out. I'm going to gut this course so that I can show you how to do this. And we're going to reset this course. All right, so this course is now an empty shell. This is how all of you receive your courses at the beginning of each semester. And then, of course, you copy your stuff into it. So what we're going to do is we're going to import a course from Commons. You remember I copied the name of this course right here. I copied that. Because if I'm going to look for this course, I have to know how to type this in exactly like that. So if I go over here, where is it? Where'd it go? If I go here, I'm going to import from Commons. And I don't want to see that. And I'm going to paste that verbiage directly into the search field in Canvas Commons. And it brings up this thing. And if I click on this link, it tells me that I can preview this by scrolling through here. I can look at this. And I can also look at the details uh, about this course. But I can also import this course into that shell, into that Canvas shell. And that course was our way three staging, I think, wasn't it? It was, nope, it was, what was it? Oh, well, I'm going to guess. I think it was this one. So I need to check off the course that I want to, into which I want to import it. I have a lot of courses. And I will click import at the bottom. And it tells me you have successfully started the import. It may take a little while. So let's go back over to my dashboard. I'm getting click happy. Sorry. <laughs> You're asking your computer to do a lot of things. Yeah, I'm, I'm moving too fast. It's, it's, I'm, I'm capable of moving faster than it is. I was going to say, my suggestion is click import and go get a new cup of coffee. And yeah. Finish importing before you start yeah. clicking around. All right. So let's, let's do this. That's what I usually do. There. So remember just a second ago, this course was empty. I, I deleted everything in there. I reset it. And now I have the template in there. So back to this. I have given you the instructions right here for how to do what I just showed you. If you follow these instructions, this will tell you how to import either one of those two templates that we've just shown you. Any comments on that? Any questions? We don't have an assessment survey, do we, that we need to give out? You know what? I've